This week's episode of the Run, Eat, Drink podcast is brought to you by listeners like you. Head on over to patreon.com slash run, eat, drink podcast and subscribe today. Fans, founders, and insiders like you help us keep the Run, Eat, Drink podcast going. And we thank you for your support. This is Catherine Switzer, and you're listening to the Run, Eat, Drink podcast. Welcome to the Run, Eat, Drink podcast. We feature destination races from across the country. And after the race, we take you on a tour of the best local food and beverage to celebrate. So whether you are an elite runner or a back of the packer like us, you'll know the best places to accomplish, explore, and indulge on your next runcation. Hey, welcome to the Runny Drink Podcast, episode 172. I'm your host, Amy. I'm your co-host, Dana, coming to you live from a hurricane. Stop it. <laughs> you're not going to, you're not Jim Cantori. No, I am no Jim Cantori. However, <laughs> we are actually recording this week's episode as rain bands pass through from what is now Hurricane Elsa. Is it? Because she can't Hurricane. make up her mind. Oh, you know, she just can't let it go. <laughs> she, she can't, just let, can't it let it go. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah. The, uh, she wants to build a snowman, but it's Florida. <laughs> yeah. Can't do that here. Now, we had planned on, on getting this episode recorded and out, but we got caught up with life and errands trying to prepare ahead of the storm because we yes. just weren't really sure exactly where it was going to come aground. And yeah. as of yesterday, when we did a coffee chat, we were still inside of the cone of uncertainty. You're just having so much fun I, I, with that I, right now, yeah. aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> having lived through several hurricanes and a tornado, yes, you're still having fun with it. I'll take a hurricane any day over a tornado, though. Tornadoes you know are coming. potential offshoots from hurricanes. That is true. It, so, Not to make complete light of this, if you are listening to this and you are going to be in the storm's path, please be safe and take every precaution possible. But We're thinking of everybody in Florida here, and we hope that you are well-stocked and you are safe. Yes, absolutely. Mm. But that said, we're having a little bit of fun with it tonight as we record. We are hopeful that the power will stay on because you know, yeah. we, we talked about it yesterday and said, let's get this thing recorded before we have power interruptions. And then all of a sudden tonight, we're having power interruptions. interruptions. Yes. Not enough to shut us down. Not so far. So far, but enough to make sensitive electronics like computers and mixing boards and microphones and stuff we need to actually produce the show. Uh, right. Blink. Quick. Talk fast. We're just going to keep going. <laughs> we have a great show. I like to think so. We're stepping back and taking a look at the very last run in your Couch to 5K, your easy 5K program uh, featuring Jeff Galloway's Run, Walk, Run method. Yes. That took place in Tampa at Richard's Father's Day Family Walk and Jog. Yeah, we did week seven, day three, which is race day mm -hmm. in that eight-week program. And yeah. we took that on the road. Yeah. And we went back to a race that we covered the first time was two years ago, mm -hmm. I want to say. Yeah. And it was nice to revisit a race that has come back since the start of the pandemic. I'm so glad. And, and to see that it is back. And it had that kind of, this is the way it should be. Oh, oh that is a great way to put it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I loved it. So we're going to be revisiting an old favorite. And then we found a brand new place. So excited. In Tampa. Brand new to you, shockingly. Yeah, I'd heard You knew of, about it? I had heard of it. I had driven past it plenty of times and mm. thought when I was up visiting family, oh, we ought to go here, oh, we ought to go here, and just never did. Oh, yeah. But we're going to be visiting a place that does a interesting twist on Tex-Mex. Fast, fresh Tex-Mex. Taco Dirty. Yeah. And then for the drink portion... We're sticking around at yes. Taco Dirty. <laughs> because they It's have, very rare that we do that. but I, Because we want to feature many wonderful places, but they just had an eclectic mix of beverages that you don't normally see. Yeah. So. They really do. Why not? So let's talk running. 
Indeed. And the first thing I have to say is a huge shout out to Michael Kilgore. Who from, we ran into. From the Columbia Restaurant Group. Yes. Yeah, we actually ran into Mr. Kilgore at the race at pa- Packet Pickup. Yeah. When yeah. we were picking up our packet on race morning because we were playing catch up and the days just got away from us leading up to that run. And then online registration closed and I reached out to him and he said, that's all right, come on, here, give me your details and and we'll make it happen. And he totally did. You pulled a string. It was fantastic. He's been on the show before. I know. When Casa Santa Stefano opened. Yes. And to talk about that amazing and delicious food and the environment and everything about that restaurant just makes me want to go back there. But I digress. My point is he's been on the show before. He's a friend of the podcast. He's a friend of the podcast. He has been so good to us and he was there for us yet. And literally there for us morning of the race. Yeah. So the the race itself is held or it was held this time, just like it has been in the past. It mm-hmm. starts and finishes on the property at one of our favorite Tampa restaurants, Eulaly. Yes. We've talked about this restaurant on the show at least oh. once, I think maybe twice. Multiple, because we... And at, I know we've mentioned it. At the time that we interviewed Michael Kilgore, we then did a recap of all the Columbia Restaurant Group favorites that we ha- right. have had the chance to eat and just rave about. So we've talked about them a number of times. Well, we're going to talk about them one more time because this was the start point and the end point of this race. And this is the eighth annual Richard's Father's Day Walk and Jog. Mm -hmm. This was just a fun family event. Oh, there were a, dogs. It's an out and back course that Kids. takes you right along the Hillsborough River. Tampa River Walk. Along the River Walk. So beautiful at night, but it was also beautiful at this time of morning because the race, what, it started at 8? I want to say it was 8 a.m. 8 a.m. And it was just gorgeous. It was humid. It was very we humid. Could ring the bell if ding, ding. you didn't hide uh-huh. it from me, but you hid it from me, so... Ding, 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 ding. (laughs) Okay. It was humid. Yes. My point. It was also shockingly successful. Oh, what do you mean shockingly? I, look, we've done more than our fair share of small, local, and regional 5K events. Yeah. I don't know that we've ever run one where they announce at the event... That the 5K raised more than $110,000 for its affiliated charity. And that's exactly what this race did for the Mm. Moffitt Cancer Center in Tampa. And if you're not familiar with Moffitt, Moffitt is a world-class, world-famous cancer research and treatment facility that's in Tampa, attached or, or adjunct to the University of South Florida. And people come from all over the world for treatment. Mm hmm. And the fact that they were able to raise six figures with a Father's Day 5K, that's pretty amazing, I think. I think it speaks to their reputation, the hard work of that, of everyone in that restaurant group. Oh, yeah. And also speaks to the running community's hunger for live and in-person races. Yes. We uh, love virtuals. We oh, love them. Without a doubt. Not saying anything about virtuals because we like to do both. Yeah, but there's just something about the energy. And I think runners in our community are hungry for that. Oh, with, I could not agree more. Mm-hmm. And there's something about the energy, the camaraderie, the smiles that were there, uh, the, you know, Parents and kids, single runners, groups of runners from the same office. Tampa was there. Run Tampa Run Club was there. The event was just phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, there, there's really no no other way to describe it. This is such a cool little 5K, and, and it's a great opportunity. 
if you're maybe you're going to do a little weekend getaway with your dad for for Father's Day and you're thinking about a place to go or yes. something to do, Tampa, Florida is an amazing city for culture, for food, for drink, for sports. There's this True. little thing. There's this little thing happening with the sport that's on the ice and the the puck and the sticks and all that. Bolts and they're a big deal they are. from what I understand. Um, is it football. And now, I mean, granted, really when do. I was growing up, our football team wasn't much to talk about. But it is this but, year. But incredibly loyal fans, regardless. So oh, yeah. Bucks fans are, are Bucks fans through and through. Mm-hmm. Uh, professional soccer. We have the Tampa Bay Rowdies. I, just you name it. And really, even the roots in professional wrestling in Tampa are tremendous. You speak with so much authority for somebody who is not a sports fan on a regular basis. No, but I mean, I grew up with with a lot of it in the yeah. family and and nearby. I grew up two miles from World Championship Wrestling's headquarters. I, I and I did watch wrestling as a kid. It was just there's so much to to, to do. So if you were going to maybe runcation with dad Mm -hmm. and you wanted to come to tampa for the weekend and catch a sporting event hit some places for some amazing food and drink run a race to do something good in the summer this june yeah yeah runners it's great it's great (laughs) june is a great time to do it and then of course there's also gasparilla Right. And just to rewind, Gasparilla is usually in the end of February at the same time the princess races are at Run Disney. So that's a bone of contention for many. Hard to decide. But if you rewind to November, the sister race, I guess you would call it, the sister race of this one is coming back this November. It is. And that's a nighttime race in Ybor City. Which is... And then beautiful columbia food afterwards and ybor city is basically tampa's little havana and it's great it is a beautiful historic part of town yeah there's a a tremendous cultural and entertainment district there that you just really can't beat and tampa bay brewing oh yeah columbia food food and drink scene down there is insanely good casa santa stefano that's just that's just the columbia restaurant group stuff it's the tip of the iceberg yeah it is so we decided to do this race again to revisit it because we loved it so much. Mm-hmm. It's a great um, cause. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to see what it was like coming back off of the pandemic. Mm. And what did you think? It felt like there wasn't any pandemic. It, it, it felt like... Back to normal? Yeah. Yeah. It had that really positive energy that you have at even bigger races like Gasparilla or like a run Disney event. It just felt really good. Yes. Really positive. Really. The energy level was just, it was palpable. The happiness that was in the air. Absolutely. And there were some people who did have masks, but very few and far between. And nobody thought, twice about it if you wanted to wear one great wear if you one. didn't want to not a problem nope. the, the pre-race event they had the presentation of colors by the rough riders they yeah. had a kids area set up I, I, I call it a kids area they they had an area set up that was manned by people from the tampa bay buccaneers including some players and cheerleaders, cheerleaders who yeah. were helping kids throw spirals at an inflatable target they of course had a light bre- light fair breakfast and snacks yeah. for the race participants out on the lawn at Eulalie. And they do the Pledge of, Pledge of Allegiance and the, uh, or I'm sorry, the national anthem. And then we're off to the races. Right. After Richard's announcement of how much they raised. And he did it himself, which and, I thought was great. And you could tell Richard Gonsmart, he, it's his family's restaurant group. And he, generation after generation, they have been so amazing to the Tampa community. Oh, preserving history, becoming part of Tampa's mm-hmm. culinary identity, mm-hmm. and working with phil- philanthropic groups. Mm-hmm. That restaurant group and that family are just, they're an absolute treasure to the whole city. Yeah, and but you could tell that he was so moved and so excited to share the news. He was. It was just fantastic. And then we were off. Yes. 
So it was a great way to start the race. And like I said, this was the this was for us those that were run the Galloway Easy Five K program with Dana that I had been doing over the the seven weeks leading up to this. This was race day, mm-hmm. and we decided to take our show on the road, and we were doing this event as we practiced. So race day was going to be an interval run, five seconds running. 25 seconds walking for the duration of the 5k Mm -hmm. and that's what we did except for the fact that at the beginning since this was going along the tampa bay river walk which is a paved probably 20 foot wide 22 foot wide sidewalk that runs along the river and on uh, along the water's edge you have a, a guardrail we had a huge bottleneck so for the first couple of minutes, yeah, no intervals were happening. And I did the live stream on this on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram that Twitter. Or Twitter that morning, excuse me, and letting people know, hey, as soon as the runners kind of space out a little bit and we get ability to for this to to thin out, we'll start doing intervals. That's a challenge that you see at lots of races though it is and i think that if you are starting to get into running i think that's something to keep in mind you might go there maybe you're right on the cusp of your time limit that you're trying to get to and you're worried and you're nervous relax everybody knows that that beginning is a bit of a bottleneck and it spreads out and then it opens up yeah and that's exactly what happened in a couple of- it was just an Nice people were polite. Yes. Even with just the the crowd that started before everyone spread out and found their pace, Mm -hmm. their paces, their different paces. It was such a great group. And then people who were running and people who were walking, you saw them stick to one side or the other. Yes. Which was great. Yeah. Great. Nice race etiquette. Great race etiquette. And I was trying to practice that. So when I would have my interval, I'd raise my hand Mm -hmm. so that people would know something's about to happen with this guy. And they'd see me slow down. And I'd make sure that when I was walking, I was walking to the right. When I was running, I was passing on the left. Nice. So On your left. On your left. Mm. Yeah. Not quite that fast. No, not, no Captain America. So we ended up doing- You're my Captain America. Aw. I do have the shirt and the mask. Yes. But the, so we ended up going out along the river and heading down really towards downtown and towards Tampa Bay. That's the the race course itself. And then it's basically an out and back turning or you you turn around at the end and go back the way you came. And along the way, you're seeing the University of Tampa and it's beautiful metal spires that yeah. the, it looks like a like a castilian spires beautiful like a castle almost that was the old henry b plant hotel i gave people a very brief history lesson on mm. the fact that henry b plant made up the pirate invasion oh, jose of gaspar. jose gaspar yes and we still to this day celebrate it in tampa even though it never happened um we were also visited along the race course by a dolphin in the river. Oh, nice. Yeah. You didn't so, tell me that. Yeah, saw that briefly. And just, it was a great event. And I got to do the intervals. And right at the end, I was feeling pretty good and kept the momentum going. Long story short. Did you stay true to the interval? I didn't ask you this before, but did you stay true to the intervals at the finish, because you know how Jeff says when you have more gas at the tank at the end, then you can drop to running more and walking less. I, I did run a little bit more at the end to make up for the fact that I ran less at the beginning. So I made up for those intervals that I missed during the, the first couple of minutes. A good lesson that you out. can make up time where the course is not narrow. Exactly. And the point during the entire live stream that I was trying to make was I was staying conversational. I wasn't huffing and puffing. I'm sweating because it was humid, but we had a nice overcast morning that day. Luckily. It, very luckily. Mm, humid, but overcast. If that had been sunny, it would have been pretty miserable. It, was, it would have been really tough. And But the point that I was illustrating to people was I was conversational the mm-hmm. whole time and I had fuel of the tank left at the end and I was able to do it. Mm-hmm. So I completed the race course. Our goal for that seven weeks of training was to make sure that a person brand new to run, walk, run, starting their very first couch to 5k would be able to maintain a 
pace of 16 minutes a mile. Mm -hmm. Now, some people would say, 16 minutes a mile, what are you talking about? That's not super fast. There's method to the madness. We are not a Disney podcast, but we are Disney adjacent, meaning we do some of the Disney races. And that's one of the races where people get very concerned about getting swept. And they don't want to fall behind the infamous balloon ladies Mm -hmm. at a Disney race. So we decided we would prep somebody who might be doing this to see what a 16 minute per mile pace is, which is what you have to maintain to stay ahead of the balloon ladies. So that was the method to the madness. We did the five second running, 25 second walking. Mm. Our total time on Uh, The race course was 46 minutes, 14 seconds for a distance of 3.12 miles. What that breaks down to is not only did we meet our 16 minute a mile goal, we beat it. We, We didn't just beat it and get it 15 and change. We beat 15. Ooh. We were at 14 minutes and 49 seconds average pace. Great job. So that is just an attempt on my part to illustrate to people what the run walk run method can do Mm -hmm. even using a small running interval Mm -hmm. and a short walking interval and it's very powerful i in fact i we're going to be talking about another race in an upcoming episode that i just ran this past weekend Mm -hmm. and it was a slightly more aggressive interval but still very achievable by Mm. by novice runners Mm. And I had an excellent result from that one as well. Yeah. And we're going to talk more about that. I don't want to give it away. So <laughs> we ended up doing that. I crossed the finish line to get my official time. And then I, I liked how they had the volunteers all along the course and the water stop, too. And I also, I wasn't expecting the water stop. But it was there. It was. And I forgot to mention that. It was just ahead of the turnaround. Yes. So that you could grab the water before or after or both. Which I did both. You did both? I did. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. By, by the time I got down there, it was uh, a little muggy. It was just like that humid heat that is just, it makes you sweat, even if you are not working out at all. You're outside for five minutes. and it's- With that proximity to the river, you were literally Steam. on the bank. It was Steam, just steamy. Yeah. Yeah. So it was great. So then you did a great job. I kept live streaming, talking to people, and I said, Well, I'm looking for a, a tuft of golden curls on the horizon, and I saw it. And I ran back down on the course and ran in with you. Yes. And because when, I was doing a different interval. Why don't you tell us about it? Because this was a big deal for you in your recovery. You think it was a big deal, huh? I do. We did a five K and I decided to participate using 555 so as opposed to my 525 correct so i think it was pretty comfortable for me and that first mile is always a liar it doesn't matter whether it's a 5k or a half or 10k whatever distance it is it is a liar it's hard. Yes. It is the, your body's got to get used to getting the flow. It takes me a mile. It may take other people a shorter amount of time, but I'm telling you, that first mile is tough. There are right a lot now. of people like that. I don't that. find my stride until I get over that hump. But once I did, it was just, I, the 555 worked for me. It worked for me, and it was... Basically the fastest 5K since the knee surgery. Nice. Mm -hmm. So that's good. If you judge your PRs or reset your PRs based on a certain point in time, like I'm going to, I'm going to wipe the slate clean and do here. Here's my best performance since the surgery. I'm not going to compare myself to pre-surgery time. I don't think you can. I think the, the, you've now got a new structure to your knee. Mm -hmm. And you've got to be fair to yourself. Yeah. And you've got to train from that point and go, okay, this is my baseline and this is where I'm going. So I reset. Very nice. And that's all right. You looked great. Your posture was really good the entire time. You looked like you were adhering to your intervals. Yes? Yes. 
almost all the way through the end. And when you came, I, I think I might have missed one or two. I but, was probably me talking to you, sorry. No, but it was fine because I didn't really, I wasn't trying to be super fast or prove a point post-surgery or anything like that. I, w- I just wanted to finish feeling good. Yeah. And I think that there's a big sense of accomplishment in that. I would agree. Yeah. So, so I felt good. I was under an hour, so that's great for me. And I hope that in the next official or virtual that I decide to push a little bit, that I can better the time. I don't think that's going to be a problem for you. You've been killing it on the training, the two a days, the weight loss. Now, we put a poll out in Instagram about doing the Faster 5K program or the 10K. Have you decided, you've looked at the poll results and decided? I looked at the poll results, and it would appear that there is a slight edge for those who would like to see me do the 10K program as opposed to the Faster 5K program. Of course, that was just the Instagram poll. I could poll the Runcation Nation Facebook group. Maybe you should do that, and let's just see. We'll get as big a sampling as we can, and we'll go from there. But I'd be curious, probably in the next week or two, we'll land that plane, and then we'll announce it, and I'll do either program so that people can see what it's all about. Sounds good to me. So I now have homework. You have homework, I and do. and sounds like I'm going to have some home running homework. Yeah, yay! Mm. <laughs> so we get back, we finish the course. We oh. I, I come in with you, and which was great. We're greeted, of course, by race volunteers. Mm-hmm. The cheerleaders were f- f- there when I crossed, and then they stopped for a water break when yeah. you came in. So it was just volunteers at that point. But you were nowhere near the last person no. across the finish line. You were middle of the pack. I really liked this race because there was no pressure for anyone. Absolutely. There could be dogs, strollers. It was just a fun time, a live race. Yet There was a shirt and a bib, but no medal. And I would rather have it that way and have a majority of the money go to, or all the money go to. Moffat, for sure. But the race shirt, I really liked the green that they chose. Nice to get a different color that we don't have Mm -hmm. much of in our wardrobe. And it was interesting that it was a long sleeve for a summer race. Yes. Yeah. So I just, I think that was cool. And I'll look forward to wearing that in the fall during training runs. So. Right there with you. Heck, I'll be wearing it in the summer just to put the long sleeves between me and the sun. Yeah. I loved the after party because there was music coming from the Rough Rider setup that they had. I loved that the Tampa Bay folks, the, the Bucks, stuck around, the cheerleaders stuck around. And I loved the variety of snacks. Yes, Yeah, they had a hot cooked breakfast Mm -hmm. if you wanted to get something hot. From the Columbia. From the Columbia. Of course, this was with our challenge going on. We were doing 75 hard. We are having vegan exclusively right now. We couldn't partake in that. Oh, they had eggs. It it looked amazing. It looked fantastic. So we ended up getting some fruit. Yeah. And they had a selection of fruit there. I just wasn't feeling like it, like a banana. Yeah. Killed some apples, had some water. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was just, it, it, it was a great time out there on the lawn at Eulalie. They've got lawn furniture set up and you had kids playing and dogs playing. And uh, again, it was like a park environment. And we ran into Tim Shackton. We did. Yes. Tim, the brewer, the, the brewmaster, the head brewer, the, the man in charge of, of the brewery. Eulalie Spring Brewing. Yes. Oh. And he ran the race, and and we just got to talk with him for a little bit and catch up. It was just fantastic to see him. Oh, yeah. And he looked great. He did. So it it was great. I think he talked to us about the beer menu and what was coming, which I loved. We got a little sneak preview of what some beers coming up. And he invited us back to Eulalie, so I can't wait to get back there and have his beer 
after this challenge. Absolutely. Amazing man. Brilliant. So that did it for the run, I think. And of course it made us hungry. It did. And the temptation, of course, would be stick around till you lately opens. But you know what? We've done you lately on the show. And it's And I really want their ribeye if I'm being honest. <laughs> you know. They do have amazing offerings there, but we also wanted to bring you some other tastes from around Tampa Bay. Mm-hmm. And we went to a place like Amy had talked about. I'd seen before, but not been to myself or with family or friends or anything else being up there or being from up there. Mm-hmm. And we went to a place that's in an area of town that is referred to us in Tampa. And that is adjacent to Hyde Park, but Soho refers to South Howard or South Howard Avenue. Huh. And it is a huh. kind of an up and coming entertainment area or it's established now, but it's got newer, trendier places that mm-hmm. that have just an amazing variety of food mm. and draws for different crowds. Mm-hmm. And Taco Dirty is one of those places that <gasps> is edgy, it's creative, it's completely unique, but very familiar at the same time. Yes. And I... I'm an, I'm espousing on this, and I'm going to kick it over to you. Okay. See if, you, see if you think I'm off base. Go ahead. If you've been to Tex-Mex places that have a counter service where you go up and you select, I'm going to have a wrap, tacos, a bowl, whatever, and then you go down the line and you pick your items, mm-hmm. it's going to seem familiar in that respect. True. However, that's where the similarity stops between Taco Dirty and some of those big chain Uh, establishments Mm. because taco dirty has a very unique selection of ingredients and spices and preparations Mm. that completely turn that model on its head yeah what do you think i would agree with you they have tacos and they have bowls and in their basis for the bowls and the veggies and the proteins even in the mexican like toppings and sauces there are things that you wouldn't expect so like what i would say yes for example you could have i had the feel real veggie bowl and you can have two bases two veggies two mexi things what they call mexi things and a sauce for 8.99 and the bowl bases Some of them will seem familiar, like Mexican spice rice. But then there's avocado citrus rice and turmeric yellow rice and green peas. That one is, that's taking some of that Cuban influence, the Spanish, old old Spanish influence in Florida. Yeah, but then there's also chilled avocado and mole noodles. Yes. Yeah. This, which, which were what udon udon noodles. noodles yes that were chilled and they had the avocado mole uh, just delightful they had sofrito cauliflower rice yeah so the bold bases they had shredded lettuce so you could do like a salad base if you wanted to and they had brown rice i just there were some of those bases that are just very unique yeah so I agree. And the veggies continue the trend, don't you think? Oh, yeah. Whether you're looking at their combination of red peppers, kale, and mushroom mix, Mm. their sweet potato, corn, and pea mescla, or their fried gluten-free buffalo avocado broccoli. Mm. I mean, come on. That's just some of the crazy veggies they're offering. You can get plant-based black beans. Oh, sure. Sure. If you wanted to. And then in terms of the protein, I thought they had a nice wide variety. Yes, there's grilled steak, but there's also verde mole tofu. That was super interesting to me. And I'm not generally a tofu fan. Let me rephrase that. I don't mind tofu. Tofu is just one of those things. It's a blank slate. It's, it, it goes with whatever you it, spice it. It depends on but. how you spice it and how you prepare it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it it's very, yeah. it's generic. 
it, it, it has texture, but not much flavor. It's a blank slate, like you said. But you I love mole sauce. Yeah. And you could put mole sauce on a car bumper and it would Verde probably taste mole? good. Verde mole? Come on. Yeah. I love Verde. But you got tofu in something different. You didn't get that. I've seen some places now doing this variation on a plant-based chorizo. Indeed. And they're trying to simulate the the texture of crumbled chorizo. Mm. And they're heavily spicing whether it's texture for textured vegetable protein or tofu or some veggies, whatever the case may be. These guys are doing a plant-based mushroom and tofu chorizo. Look, we're going to talk about it in a minute. And then again, they, of course, they, they have traditional protein. They, and they do, of course, your chicken, your steak. They've also got a wide variety of things. The the Mexi things, like you talked about, the standards: pico de gallo, oh, yeah. shredded, shredded lettuce, lettuce, pickled jalapeno, fresh yeah. jalapeno. There's pickled red onions, cotija cheese. There's shredded queso cheese. There's warm queso cheese. But there's a warm vegan cauli queso. Yes. Yes, there is. Fantastic. There's dirty house salsa, guacamole, the lime jalapeno corn salad. But I just like the vegan cauli queso was an interesting choice and the radish onion and cilantro mix. yeah so clearly they have a wide selection of interesting toppings for you to mix and match and create and then sauces to boot and then they have house-made sauces five of them and i think four out of the five are plant-based or, or vegan yeah i the corn was not right the lime My yogurt mood. sriracha was not right yeah, so that's the only one. Everything else is all plant-based. So yeah. we were able to stick to our guns, do our vegan eating, and go to Taco Dirty and put together two pretty killer dishes. And you oh. said what you got, so tell everybody what you did. Cause oh, I got the feel real veggie bowl, like I said. I got the avocado citrus rice, the chilled avocado and mole noodles, fried buffalo avo broccoli, Sweet potato, corn, and pea mescala. Brussels with sweet and spicy corn dressing. Pico, roasted salsa, and a buffalo sauce. Oh. Buffalo avo sauce. And, now this sounds like a bowl for somebody that can't make up their mind, but the presentation was gorgeous. Mm -hmm. It was very colorful, and the rice was tender and just so flavorful in terms of the citrus and the avocado flavor the noodles were great and i know that it it was like a a bowl with two different personalities yeah and how did the udon noodles play with the tex-mex flavors it was so good yeah yeah <laughs> it, it was so good would I get the rice and the noodles in the same bowl again? I don't know, but I did not mind it. I thought that the different textures were great, and then the sweet potato to go along with them. I just thought it worked. There were many levels of spice and citrus and tart and sweetness that just kept me really satisfied. Nice. What did you get? Tell us about yours because I thought it was super cool. I'm a simple man. I was having envy almost. I am a simple man and I love a good hearty plate of nachos. Mm. I like pub foods. Mm. You know, a, a pub burger, a basket of wings, a plate of nachos, whatever the case may be. Can't have, depending on where you're at, I can maybe have a plant-based burger Chicken sure. wings are hard to really replicate right now. Yeah. But they were offering what they call Nacho Average Bowl. So clever. And this is for $8.99. You get a base of their house-made chips. You get one veggie, one protein, vegan queso or regular queso. You might know which black beans, two of their Mexi things toppings, and one sauce. So I topped mine with the plant-based mushroom and tofu chorizo. Of course, I picked the vegan cauliflower 
queso. My Mexi things, I am a huge Pico de Gallo fan. Yeah. I think Pico gives you the best of a couple of worlds. You could always go with salsa. Sure. But salsa, it tends to be soupier, and it tends to make your chips on, on nachos get soggy. Mm. I hate soggy chips. Mm. Pico, what I do is if they, if I'll tell them when they're, if they're going to put it on top, I'll make sure they strain the liquid Mm. so I don't get a lot of liquid on it. Mm. Or if they're going to give it to me on the side, I strain it myself so that I'm getting the fresh herbs. I'm getting the chopped raw tomato. You're getting the salsa flavor without the, without the mess that it, or the impact it can have on the chips. Exactly. Yeah. So I got that with mine. I also, let me see. I got the, where's it at? What are you looking for? The other Mexi thing that I I got two Mexi things. It was the... You didn't get the pickled red onions? That was it. Thank you. (laughs) I'm looking right past them. Pickled red onions because I wanted some crunch and some tartness. Yeah. And then... I love pickled red onions. And and then for the sauces, I ended up getting their guac sauce. Mm. And this... had a bite to it. Yeah. This is like if guacamole and salsa verde had a love child. With some, with just with a, a hint of spice. Yeah, yeah. So it was th- thinner than guacamole, but and it was on the side in a container. So, but creamier than a salsa verde. So it wasn't like it was going to destroy your nachos and their consistency. No, you still had the crunch. I was able. I was able to drizzle as drizzle as per you bite wanted. Exactly. What can I really say about these? Their their nachos are cooked to order. Everything is fresh. Chips were vegan. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what? I also got. I I did add the fried gluten or the the flat fried gluten free buffalo avocado broccoli. That was so to mine good. As well. That was really good. Yes, yes, I did. So that was the other one. The the texture. Chips were perfect. They're fresh made. I love fresh tortilla chips. Can't beat that. The vegan cheese. Vegan cheese is a weird thing. It is. A lot of places will do it with like basically making a cashew cream and then they will add other flavorings and spices into that cashew cream to give it a cheesy flavor. A lot of times those are things like turmeric for the yellow color, things like brewer's yeast for... The, the kind of the funky flavor that cheese mm-hmm. has and yeah. maybe a little bit of salt for the saltiness and something acidic like vinegar or lemon juice. Mm-hmm. They were doing something similar in this respect, but they were doing it with pureed cauliflower mm-hmm. mash yeah. instead. And it worked really well. I liked it. The flavor was very good. It was it going to fool me? Did I think that this was bright orange queso from a can? No. Absolutely not. No. Did it taste good in its own right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And that's what I was looking for. I'm not looking for them to successfully replicate. I'm looking for them to give me a vegan spin on. Sure. These things. And this was really good. The buffalo avocado broccoli thing is just weird that's basically broccoli bites with they're fried they're, yeah they're it's tasty I, I think that it's just their house-made buffalo sauce with avocado mashed and like coating the broccoli, broccoli. floret yeah and then they f- probably dust it with some sort of a flour and then flash fry it yeah but that gave you this kind of big honking almost meaty thing to bite into it was very good which was really nice and a little bit of spice a little bit of the creaminess from avocado i love avocado i can eat a uh, table side guacamole at a mexican restaurant anytime uh, just give me that for my mm. appetizer and i'm happy mm-hmm. so i'm an easy sell mm. When it comes to that, I love pickled red onion. I think that's just a, it's a great topping for a lot of things. So you you really can't go wrong. And their guac sauce was very unique. Like I said, that combination of salsa verde and guacamole thing going on there was perfect. For nine bucks, I was stuffed. Oh, but... We, we had to have dessert. <laughs> we did have to have dessert, at least oh. to try it, because they were offering vegan 
gluten-free chocolate chip churro cookies from a local bakery called Sweet Soul. Do you know this, having been I, in Tampa? I do not know this bakery. No. it was. They were so good. I don't know that I got churro off of them, but chocolate chip cookie, 100%. Oh, see, I did. Did you really? I, the cinnamon and the sweetness. The, I just remember chocolate chip cookie. Yeah, this was like chocolate and cinnamon. It was it was very reminiscent I of really, a churro for me. I loved it. That was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. That those are prepackaged and in mm-hmm. their cold case, and you can get them at the end of your meal. Yeah. This place, I want to go back when we're yeah. not on the seventy five hard challenge oh, and yeah. try some of their other proteins. Yeah, like the roasted pineapple pork. Oh, yeah. Citrus chipotle chicken. Grilled lime and sour orange chicken. Yeah, that sounds really interesting to me. So mm. I this is going to be a repeat for us, I think, given that we do travel to Tampa pretty frequently for family. Oh, yeah. So I see us back at Taco Dirty in the not-too-distant future. So good. So, again, if you guys are traveling to the Tampa Bay area and you're looking for an amazing place to grab a bite of fresh unique tex-mex inspired food give taco dirty a try in the soho section of tampa it's quick but it has high quality oh you know we didn't say Mm. talk about the surround the environment it was fun there were signs like tacos yes you maybe something like that (laughs) there were clever and funny signs yeah it's got a Punk rock vibe. Yeah. What did, what did that sign say? It was, am I right? I think you're right. Am I right? Yeah. I don't know. Tacos, yes, you maybe. You maybe. It was so, it was fun. And they had little stools on a counter, a bar stool area where we sat. But there was indoor seating, outdoor seating, and just vibrant, bright colors, pinks and teals. And the floor was black and white, um, checkered. Yeah. And I, it was just... I really, I dug it. Yeah, it's a casual, punk, rocky kind of vibe. This would be, again, this is a great place to go with mm-hmm. you and a significant other. If, you, if you're, you know, yeah. just looking for a, a laid back place to go for lunch. They're quick. It's high quality. But also they opened, they just recently opened a, a location in St. Pete. Good for them. So it's I did not, not know that. just in that Soho, Tampa area anymore. Good for them. Give them a shot. Taco Dirty in Tampa. We will have a link to them in the show notes. Check them out. Mm. But before we go on, we want to say thank you to all of our patrons for your support and the growth that you have allowed us to achieve. And we got a new patron. We did. We did. And I think that we did mention this one last week, but it does bear repeating that we welcome a new patron at the insider level, at the $10 level. And it's our favorite, one of our favorite businesses, I guess I should say. It's our favorite hometown pizzeria. It is. Nice Guys Pizza, Greg and Jovana. They are amazing. And they became patrons of our show. We can't thank them enough for... First of all, all the support that they have given us throughout the years of this show. Yeah, through it's the highest of highs in our family and the lowest of lows. That those two individuals and the business and their food has been there for us. Phenomenal. We've weathered uh, much like tonight, weathering a hurricane as we are recording. Oh. We've actually weathered a hurricane at their business and the that was aftermath. Irma, yeah, the right? aftermath of Irma. They were one of the few places that had power and fresh food. And cold, delicious beer. Yes. Oh. (laughs) So we, it means so much to us when we get patrons who support the show. You all, we can't adequately express our appreciation. So Greg, Yovna, thank you for being our newest patrons. All of our patrons do help the show really more than we can say. We do try to show you with the additions and improvements to the set when you see us doing videos. But your contributions each month help us continue to grow. Just this week, we have started making travel plans to go across the United States and across the state of Florida, getting back out there and doing travel races. And you guys are helping to make that possible. If you go to patreon.com slash run, eat, drink podcast, we have three different levels of monthly support, $2, $5, and $10. And each of those levels 
have their own unique perks that we're going to continue to add to and refine in yes. 2021. We are about to unveil three additional levels of patronage yes. for, for those that really want to get more of the show. and Or that you're just huge fans. And you just love us and want to help us out. We'll take that too. Patrons get special thank you messages from us. Yes. Uh, insiders get a look behind the scenes, access to video footage, early access of special interviews like Catherine Switzer, who we heard at the top of the show. Yeah. Cooking demos, exclusive tastings of our favorite foods and beverages that didn't make it into the show proper. And uh, patron-only uh, events. We've now had one of those. Yeah, so we're live going to be doing those even more. But look, the show itself is always going to be free. But if you guys want to help the Running Drink podcast grow for the long term and you want to support us over the long term, check us out. Patreon.com slash Runny Drink Podcast. Or if you're using Podbean, you can tap on the reward button right at the top of the app to become a patron. Same perks, same levels right there in the Podbean apps as well. Thank you, everyone, for every bit of your support. And we are going to continue to do what we can to bring you the very best show that we can. And we love the fact that you're listening to the Runny Drink Podcast. We had drinks at Taco Dirty, too. I know. Now, it's a rare day that we do food and drink from the same place. But sometimes that's just got to be the way it's going to be because something tickles our fancy so or unique. tickles our taste buds. It was just their offerings are so unique. Now, they had soda. Or do you call it pop? I call it soda. I call it soda, but there are some people in some regions that call it pop. Well, so for our purposes, we're going to call them fountain drinks. Mm-hmm. Fountain drinks. That's way to go, man. And they did have those. Well done. But And they were not the standard Coke or Pepsi and their related products. They had a unique selection of mm-hmm. options there. Yeah. But we went to the stuff that was even more unique that they had Indeed. You want to start? You go ahead. Okay. I am a sucker for peach tea. You love tea. I lo- I grew up drinking sweet tea. My mom made very traditional southern sweet tea. There's mm-hmm. no such thing as unsweetened tea in my house. If, if I ever Mm-mm. accidentally drink sweet tea, please call poison control or unsweetened Unsweet tea. tea. Call poison control. I'm going down. It's your signal. Yeah. You know those memes? It's your signal. But you've been kidnapped. I was willing to try this one because they had a peach Bellini tea that was unsweetened. Yeah. It would have been better sweetened. Of course. But this tea had fresh peach puree Mm. in the tea and it was refreshing and crisp and the essence of peach and not the essence the aroma the flavor everything it just i just man a little hit of agave nectar in this would have been amazing Perfect. it would, would have taken it from a nine to a ten. Ooh, yeah you're a sweet tea man i'm a sweet tea you man you are but but i purposefully i went in knowing i i saw it <laughs> and i'm like i know this yes and I'm going to try it anyway because I love, I, as a kid. Peach. You love peach. I love peaches. I eat peaches. Amy knows when uh, summer hits and it's peach season and, you, and for a couple of weeks we can get really big, juicy, fresh peaches in the store. Indeed. I buy them I, I do. all the time and I eat them peel and all like an apple. Oh. While I'm walking the dogs, I'm eating a peach. and They're great in salads. Oh, they're great on pizza. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. I'll have that fight with somebody. You may want to say pineapple doesn't belong on pizza. Peaches do. Oh, our friends at Nice friends Guys. At nice guys what the, did they call it first the, when they had it on they special? They made, made a pizza called the Presidents of the United States of America, named yes. after their song or the group because of their song, Peaches. Yes. And if you're not familiar with that song, go look it up on your favorite uh, music app. Mm-hmm. It's a great song. <laughs> so anyway, I, I but I grew up as a kid drinking Arizona iced tea, and I loved their peach tea. Mm, so that's good. This was a natural riff on that. Just fantastic. Mm-hmm. I loved it. 
but you got something. A, I didn't expect you to get, and B, I didn't expect you to if you did get it. Or go back for seconds. Or go back for seconds. Or thirds, I think. Tell us about your beverage. It was called Pineapple Celery Mint, and it had pineapple juice, celery, mint, lemon juice, and agave. There's your agave. There's my agave. There's your, it's it in your in, drink. It went into my pineapple celery mint beverage. Okay, there's so much wrong with what you the, the, that word salad you just spoke there doesn't make any sense. And well, it didn't have celery puree. You know how you yours had the peach puree. It did not have celery puree. I really think I didn't ask them, and we don't know what the devil magic is. But I think they did. They used celery seed, oh, or see. or they juiced it. No, I think you don't think they used celery seed a little bit. No, I think they, I really got that super strong. I think they used celery juice. Mm. Yeah, you're, you're better at sussing that out than I am so you're probably right oh, I don't know we didn't ask the about whole their thing magic doesn't, it doesn't make sense but it's so good and then you're, you tried this and I'm like uh, and I'm waiting for one of the Amy faces to happen and it didn't and I'm like one well, of the Amy faces the, everyone knows what I'm talking about who's watched the videos okay it didn't happen and I'm like you like that she goes yeah this is good it's weird it was really the pineapple was balanced it was not overly minty because you know how I am about I don't really like mint in a whole lot of things except for toothpaste and a mojito yeah that's about the truth um, you want to turn Amy off to a beer or a cocktail other than maybe say a Mai Tai or it's not a really prevalent flavor in a Mai Tai. It's right. not. It's a garnish. There's a hint of it. But I, when I saw this, I was like, all right, pineapple, celery, agave, and lemon, I can see. The mint, I said, this is going to turn her off completely. But it didn't. It was just well balanced. The f it was not too much of any one flavor. Because sometimes pineapple beer... Or pineapple cider is just too much pineapple. And pineapple juice by itself is too. It's very sweet. Yeah, I can only take it in small doses, small amounts. Yeah, pineapple juice is very overpowering on its mm -hmm. own. And by the way, this is the, these beverages were non-alcoholic. No, and yeah, mine no was, alcohol. Mine was simply an iced tea, and Amy's is a fruit juice mix. Mm -hmm. A fruit juice mix, and I would tell you, I would get it again. I think really it was sweet tart and no one flavor it was not like what do you normally say tasting like your front lawn right was not oh like i'll that. tell you with the celery juice that absolutely had the potential to uh, it can every ingredient here except for the agave really had the potential to ruin that juice if it's too if it's used in a heavy-handed way yes but i loved it uh, I did too. I mean, you let me looked, taste yours. I was like, this is actually really good. It looked like pineapple juice coming out of the machine. Yes. But it was just fantastic. And I expected it to be really heavy on pineapple. Me too, and but it, it was not very well balanced. Nicely Loved done. It. Love it. That is the run, the eat, and the drink mm. for this week's episode. Taco Dirty. Taco Dirty. Check them out for your food and beverage needs in Soho, Tampa, and now in St. Pete, St. Petersburg, Florida. And a special thank you to Michael Kilgore for getting us the ability to participate in Richard's Father's Day family walk and jog. And we are going to have links to everything we talked about in this week's show notes. But before we go. Yeah. So we talked last week about how we met up with a patron of our show, Meg. And her husband, Brian. Yes. Great people. In the anniversary celebration and in last week's show when we recapped, we did not read her email that she sent to us at the end of the school year. We are bad podcasters. And I feel like we should. It's just like getting a great review on Apple Podcasts. This when people are detailed about what they love and, and what they'd like to see more of or what they'd like to see us add. But I feel like when we have an impact and we receive feedback like this, it's just awesome. And Meg's email starts out with a subject line that says, 
thank you seems inadequate. And says Amy and Dana, I'm crying just starting this email, but it needs to be said. I found your podcast at just the right time to give me some positivity. The weekly podcasts, chats, and Instagram messages did more to keep me going than you can imagine. I just finished my last day of this school year, and I'm so beyond grateful for your support. You are two extremely special, unique, kind, and compassionate people that honestly the world needs more of. Thank you so much. Your support truly helped me get through some very tough times this year. I can't wait to meet you soon. See you real soon. Meg. Oh, and we got to meet her. Oh, and we did. That was the best part. It was fantastic. And was- she and Brian were, they're just such great people. Oh, they really were. Yeah. And uh, I, we, or we are. What they, well, meeting them was great. Meeting them was great. They are and they great are people. great people. Yes. I know what you mean. You all know what we mean. And they've now started to do the challenge. Oh. The 75 hard challenge. I'm so sorry. So you got this. You've got it. It's awesome. We're here to support you for that too. Yeah. We'll be, we could commiserate together. Absolutely. During the tough times. But thank you for that wonderful email. It meant the world to us. Absolutely. So. Next week, we're going to be recapping a Metal Chasers virtual race Woo! and some vegan options. Are well, you upset that I said we're doing the Metal Chasers instead of your Independence Day 5K? No. Okay. No. All right. I was just asking. I, I just do whatever you tell me to do. Okay. She's got me trained, guys. Nah. <laughs> Don't forget to head over to Apple Podcasts and leave a rating and review for us. Please, folks. Please, please, please. That helps us get discovered. It's a free way to support the show. Yes. And you all have supported us in such amazing ways on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Sharing the show, it's just another way that you can get us discovered and help grow the Runcation Nation and this fabulous group of people that we now have in the Runny Drink Podcast community. And over the last couple of weeks, we've seen some pretty awesome growth on the Facebook on the Facebooks. So welcome to all you new folks that are liking and following us over on Facebook. If you haven't, please do click that button. But guys, we cannot thank you enough for following us and helping us grow. Absolutely. So it's amazing that it's even happening in this year too. Yeah. (laughs) So we're very humble. You're awesome. Well, That does it for now. Thank you for joining us on your long run, your commute to work, around the house, or wherever you are. And before we go, I'm so happy that we covered a Tampa race this week because this Sunday we will be celebrating 23 years of wedded bliss. And I just have to say to my co-host, I love you. You make every day better. And I'm so lucky to have you in my life. I love you too. So, happy anniversary. I'm your host, Amy. And I'm your co-host, Dana. Stay safe, stay well, and we will accomplish, explore, and indulge with you really soon. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Run, Eat, Drink podcast. We're having another great year thanks to your support. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We're at Run, Eat, Drink podcast. And on Twitter, we're Run, Eat, Drink pod. You can also give us a call at 941-677-2733 or send us an email at info at runeatdrink.net. Visit our website at runeatdrink.net and click on the subscribe link so you don't miss a minute. Find out how you can support the show at patreon.com slash runeatdrinkpodcast. Accomplish, explore, and indulge right along with us. We'll talk to you next time.